Ah, oh, the offseason. You got to love it. Rumors get thrown around. People go out there and say all kinds of ungodly things. But we're going to be here to cover it all because the portal is active and open. And you need dudes. Brian Kelly says he thinks he needs a lot of dudes. So we'll talk about the transfer portal here tonight. We'll break down and recap the LSU game versus Oklahoma. LSU beating, let's call it what it is. They clap smacked Oklahoma in the final game of the season. We'll break the game down again. What do we see on film? Some things that we like, some things maybe we didn't like. Maybe some things that we should have been doing all year that we weren't doing. We'll talk about that here today. We'll give a season recap. Hey, man, how are you waiting for? Right? Like, how are you eight and four? We all know how we got to eight and four, but like, let's go back through the entire season and talk about how we're eight and four. What things got to change? We'll touch on that as well. Um, also, like I said, we'll 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 hit the portal here, and we'll talk a little bit of playoff because, man, if you beat USC in Florida, or if you just beat Florida. Guys, and you're nine and three, you're one of the teams that's having the arguments with people of why we should make the playoff. You know, South Carolina is buying for a job. Ole Miss is vying for a job. And if LSU doesn't lose to Florida and or USC, they would have been in the same exact field here and in the same exact spot. So... <sighs> Just not where you want to be. You could have been there, but you're not. We'll talk about that as well here tonight. So, lots of things to get into. Carter Bryant does not join us. Um, He's calling some basketball games tonight over the air. So, we'll see him back sometime this week. Let's get to a couple comments here. Tyson says, how you doing, Blake? Doing good, man. How are you doing? Great. Uh, Appreciate you being here. Paul's up says, we know at least one Louisiana school is capable of smacking down on some of those Sooners. That's right, because Paul's up is talking about Tulane, who, you know, here's the thing about Tulane. How are you going to say and mock LSU when they can beat down Oklahoma and you can't? Like, how, how, how do we do that? Like, how, how does that, how is that a thing? So, to the social media team at Tulane, Love them. Love them. Might not want to put that out there. Right? You you, you might want to leave the bear alone. Now, I kind of hope that Tulane taking a little pot shots here and there will spark a rivalry that has been a part of LSU tradition in the battle for the – what is it? The the rag? Sounds bad. Sounds like I should say massive pause at the end of that. Uh, But – I think it's Battle of the Rag. Paul Zub will know. Paul Zub, what's the official name of the the game against Tulane? Jay Smack says, yo, what's up, brother? Good to have you in here with us. Alexander Taylor says, transfer portal is going crazy. Well, it, if you think it's going crazy, it hadn't gone crazy as what I think it's going to go. Um, but, yeah. Look, man, Caden Salter is the best quarterback that's going to hit the portal. Um. And we'll talk about him tonight. We'll talk about Caden Salter. We got to have a serious conversation. I'm not shying away from it. Neither should you. Uh, Eric Rice says the USC quarterback hit the portal on top of that. If you're talking about Miller Moss, that he did. We made Miller Moss look like a Heisman contender. Uh, Paul Sub says, Blake, it is the battle of the rag. That just we need to come up with a different name. Like battle for the period. That's that's how I read that. You know what I mean? Battle of the period. I and I don't I don't like that. Yuck. Yucky, yucky. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh Blaine Smith says, give me some scoop on recruiting. Everybody is decommitting. 
Somebody's going to run with that. Somebody's going to run with that. Clearly, I'm being sarcastic. Trey says, Blake, big semifinals this week. Franklinton versus Iowa. Cecilia versus Plaquemine. Yeah, and the winner of Cecilia versus Plaquemine, if I'm not mistaken, takes on Franklinton and Iowa. Um, just going to let it be known. We're right. We're rooting for the 985 on this show. I went back. I took my son to his first high school football game a couple of weeks ago. We went to the Franklinton West Feliciana game. Um, he loved it. You know what's 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 crazy? Because we we haven't me and you haven't really spent a lot of time together really throughout the season. But um, it's interesting. I got to see on my son's face like what it was like when we walked up to the stadium and the band's playing doom, 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 doom. And he's like, you know, he's breaking it down. Like, get it, man. Get it, man. You know, it was awesome. It was very awesome. I, I do got to, I, I do got to say so myself. Do got to say so myself. So big one. I will try to be at the dome. I will try to be. It's going to be hard for the national channel though, because we will probably have a, uh, um, playoff games that weekend. Daniel Hayes says Texas Bowl. Yay. Um, I want to play Colorado. If I had a choice, I want to play Colorado. Be a lot of exposure, whether you like it or not, for them and for us. I want to play Colorado. I don't care what bowl it's in. Now, they might have a lot of players that said, I don't know. Um, but we'll see. All right. Let's get moving here. Everybody do us a favor. Hit the like and share. If you're on Facebook, share to all those groups and to all your social media pages continuously uh, having a big month because of you. Do us a favor. Hit the like and share. Share to all those groups, social media pages. Like the page if you haven't. You know, we have more views than we do people that follow and listen to the page. So I need you to do me a favor. Hit that like, hit that share. Share to all those groups um, and like the page. If you're on YouTube, like, subscribe, notification bell, wherever you listen to podcasts, rate, review, and subscribe. Let's talk about our good friends over at betonline.ag, our good friend Tyler Alexander over at LPT Realty, and our good friends over at J&J Exterminating. We come back, we break down Oklahoma, break down the season. We got a lot of portal that we need to talk about here too. Who is LSU targeting that might be out there right now? Stay with us. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way for you to wager on all of your favorite sports, contests, events with the first to market odds and lines. Find reviews for all the news for each league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, college sports, esports, and even golf. Bet Online continues to be the top online resource for all of your sports information for live in-game betting props and futures. Head on over to Bet Online today and use your mobile device to join and make your first sports bet. Use our promo code Believe50. That's Believe50, B-L-E-A-V, 5-0 to receive your 50% off welcome bonus on your first deposit. That's BetOnline.ag. BetOnline.ag. He will fill your house and find you a new. Well, Tyler's the man, he's here for you. If you want to buy or sell, well, it's not too late. Dial 955-0008. Just call 955-0008. Y'all call Tyler, he'll shoot you straight. Louisiana is unique. The food, the festivals, even the bugs. No, not mud bugs. Unwanted bugs like these. The ones you don't want crawling in your home or business. Trust the shield from J&J Exterminating. We've been protecting Louisiana homes for over 50 years, earning the trust of our clients because we deliver what we promise. Protect your home from pests. Get the shield from J&J Exterminating. J&J Exterminating. Yeah. J&J has protected Louisiana homes and businesses for over 60 years. We call them today, make the pets go away. J&J exterminating.
Yeah. David says, I saw a Facebook pop-up that says Parkins is in there in the portal, which would remind me to make sure you're you're following the right people here. Like, for real. Make sure you're following the right people. <laughs> They'll get you, man. They'll get you. Make sure that you're, not, you're following the right people, because if you're not, you'll probably see some news that's, not even true. And you'll send it and you'll DM it to me. And I'm like, come on, man. Come on. Let's be real here. All right. Let's get to it. Everybody does us a favor and hit the like and share. Um, uh, Pearl Riven Fury says, go demons. Yeah. How about them demons? How about them demons? Let's get to it. All right. So let's break down the LSU and Oklahoma game and the final regular season game of the season here. And what was, guys, I got to be real with you, had its ups and downs, had its ups and flows. But arguably the most complimentary game that you'd played all year. Now, it's not, it wasn't without its challenges. It wasn't without its its adversity. I mean, guys, when Garrett Nussmeyer went down, it was not a good deal. Because if we as if we as we have discussed on this show and will continue to discuss until something else changes, there's not a quarterback on this roster, in my humble opinion, that's better than Garrett Nussmeyer. I don't think that it was close. And by the way, Ricky Collins entered the transfer portal today or yesterday, so we'll talk about that uh, here tonight as well. But I thought when your team needed you. Your guys, your playmakers, quite honestly, your five stars are the ones that were able to give you the spark and were able to produce for you. Let me explain. You know, Aaron Anderson, when when Garrett went down having the 100-yard kick return for a touchdown and Brian Kelly going to a press conference, making fun of himself and saying that, man, he was our he's our backup and showed us right, completely showed us that we probably should have had him back there. I mean, it's what have you been doing at Carr, and, you know, when we needed him, he was there, and he takes one for the house, and look, you had a lot of team camaraderie. Uh, camaraderie. You had Josh Williams, the walk-on, springing a big block for him to get down there, and the true freshman and Jawan Johnson, who cleans up the final one, and you go in for the score. Or Caden Durham, who had 15 total touches for 112 yards. And the game against Oklahoma. And he comes out and he tweets, this one was personal. I'm from Oklahoma City. Man, he had two carries when Nuss went out that averaged seven yards a carry. He gave you everything that you wanted. And in the beginning of the game, I had tweeted this out about Caden Durham. Please go and find it. But I had tweeted this out about him. I'm like, man, Durham's running with some purpose here. He's putting his head down. I'm like, okay, let's go. This one's, he's pissed off. Gave you a massive performance. Or a guy who had been waiting all season to get healthy. And his timing's off because he had been out for nine weeks, or ten weeks actually. And Chris Hilton returns, and finally he doesn't miss time some snaps. And Garrett places a very beautiful ball on both of the throws to Chris Hilton Jr., who had two catches for 85 yards and two touchdowns. Now, do I think that Joe Sloan, Brian Kelly, and the crew need to find a way to get Chris Hilton more involved, if that's going to be the production for him moving forward, yes. But in the production, throw him a quick slant. Throw him a hitch. Don't let everybody know that you're just going to bring him in the game, tell him to go deep, and you want to run a post or you want to run a go route with him for a score. Mix it up. But Chris comes in for a total of 12 plays, and in two of them, he scores. The only two that he's targeted on. Or Don McKinley, who is the five-star. 
So you have Aaron Anderson, a former five-star. Don McKinley, a, a five-star. Who hadn't seen much of throughout the season. Was injured in the early part of the season. But man, he, he takes care of business. And he has two sacks in the game. Looked good in doing it. Came in on some run stops. Looked good in doing it. So when there's critical third downs or you or your quarterback's down and you need seven points and your five-star wide receiver needs to go out there and return one for 100 yards, and he does, or the top 50 player that you had as a true freshman, who, by the way, isn't transferring in today's world, I need to be careful, who announced that the rumor about him is not true. We'll get to that in a second. He comes up big. Or your quarterback that was faced with adversity that when he got hit and he got hurt, he was able to pick himself up, come back, and deliver you the most convincing victory that you had had all year. So if it is a five-star wide receiver or a true freshman five-star or a five-star running back or a guy that had been in the program for a long time, when you needed to make big plays offensively, you did. When you needed to get a sack on third down, you did. When you needed to run the football on third and seven, and you were going to be in a situation where you're going to go for it on fourth down and Josh Williams gives you eight. Or when it was third and three, four, uh, four times in the second half and you lined up and you ran the football, and you punched the top 15 defense in Oklahoma Sooners right in the mouth and said, come take some. We're about that business. Or about your red-shirted freshman left guard who I know he's been facing a lot of criticism, rightfully so. But the man went up against three really good defensive tackles who had been disruptors all year. And as your boy on Wild and Out would say, Bring that ass here, boy. Massive pause. Guys, it was the best game that you had played all year. And if there was a way to finish the season, I'm glad it, you finished it the way that you did. Now, Oklahoma is not a good football team. Actually, they got Ben Arbuckle from Washington State to be their next offensive coordinator. Probably going to bring, bring his quarterback with him. And they might be okay. But they're not a good football team. It's the reason why they're 6-6. Six and six. But all of those guys, along with your quarterback, who, guys, you can't say, a, you can't say enough about Garrett and his performance. Now, we'll talk about the fumbling stuff later. But for right now, when he got hurt, is it? I saw all of you. I saw all of you. Man, that might be his Burrow moment. Everybody, everybody hopes that that's the truth. You hope it's true. I hope it's true. Everybody hopes it's true. Because if that means that you get this man, and sorry for everybody listening on the audio podcast, but I'm pointing to a, a picture that my best one of my best friends painted, Joe Burrow, if, if that's him, who's not going to accept that? You would accept it. I would Everybody wants that. Nobody is wishing for that not to happen. Guys, Garrett played a flawless second half. It was pretty flawless. Some things that I know that he wished he had back. There were a couple of times that he checked things at the line of scrimmage as far as protection, and it got him hit. It made him have to scramble. Speaking of scrambling... Bravo, chef's kiss. Bravo. Beautiful. Third and seven. You know what? I'm athletic enough in this fat ass at defensive end. I'm going to I'm going to hit him with that whoop if like I'm Chris Berman and I'm going to hit to the edge and I'm going to die for the first down. They should have gave the man the first down. Whoop. Beautiful. Yes. Yes. It's what I want to see, man. The second half was the best game that Garrett Nussmeyer's played in a half. 
You're going to say it's Georgia bullshit. It ain't Georgia. He had too many misses. He had way, way, way too many turnovers. Can't have two turnovers in a half, man. You can't. Nuss was out there daily. Now, we're going to talk about Nuss in just a moment because we're going to wrap the season up here. And we're going to talk about the entire season and how you failed to meet the expectations. You can't deny a second half, man. You, you, you simply can't. Do I think that he was the best quarterback in the SEC this year? Not even remotely close. Not uh, Guys, Jalen Milrow ran for 20 touchdowns. If they find a way for to go to the playoff, he's going to be in the 2020 club. Jane Daniels didn't do that. Get out of here. Get out of here. So, it's the best half of football that he's played. I mean, really, it is. So, you go into an offseason, you wonder what is going to happen with Nuss, and we'll talk about him. Does he return? We'll talk about that as well. Best half of football that he's played. Turnovers, him not being turnover prone is a big deal. It's, it's, it's a massive deal. That's why we talk about it every week. Guys, the reason that we talk about turnovers every week is because you, you just can't have them. And you know where you really can't have them? Okay? Where you, cl- where you l- really can't have them is in the red zone. We'll talk about that in just a minute, too. Nuss has got to get to work. He's got to get to work. He's got to have a big offseason. But as we have talked about, like literally as you and I have talked about, I know people early in the season were clamoring also for him to be benched. We just talked about that. There's nobody on this roster that was better than him at quarterback. Nuss does have to be better. And if the second half is what I get, sign me up for it. I, I, I'm hitting him in the, I'm hitting him with a shot of adrenaline literally before every game because it seemed like it focused him. Like he was focused. Like it's like you gave him a uh, – testosterone actually mellowed him out. You know, he misses a pass and he's not doing the thing with the with the chin strap. You know, every time Garrett misses a, a pass, he's – ah, ah. It mellowed him out. He missed a pass. He looked to the sideline. What's the next play? Let's go. Yes. Now, can you maintain? There's a difference in a whole season versus a whole half. I mean, guys, let's just be real. The the, the fumble scoop and score is horrendous. It's been we're gonna talk about the turnovers here in just a minute. Flawless. So five players that really stepped up here. Speaking of Caden Durham, we talked about him earlier. Um, so I put out a report yesterday about Caden Durham. I'm assuming a lot of you saw it because it got over 200,000 views or 300,000 views on Twitter. Um, there was a story and rumor about Caden Durham that I don't think a lot of parties inside of LSU's facility or um, people in general that didn't like that being out there. And what I would say is this. I told you this earlier. Be careful who you get news from. Be very careful. And then when that person posted a source that said, hey, I spoke with Caden Durham's family, you, you know, he might do X, Y, and Z. That's not a source. Um, I don't know what the future holds for Caden Durham. I don't. What I do know is that the rumors that were kept flying out there yesterday about Oregon and tampering and money are inaccurate. I guess Caden Durham thought so himself. He re- he quote tweeted it when we said that the rumors were baseless and false. 100. So, let me just tell you this. There are a lot of things that I am told. They never make it on the show. 
They never make it on the forum. They don't even make it on Twitter. They don't. There's a business and cycle that rolls around here. I've had my fair share of mistakes. I own my mistakes. Literally. I will own my mistakes. But man, I, I, I'm not trying to hurt anybody. I w- I mean, it was, you just can't put out a report like that. I, from the bottom of my heart, I'm serious. I don't want any ill will with anybody. But one thing that I know is, is that Caden Durham seems and feels to be really solid. Let's see what happens here. All right. Again, don't know nor care unless it affects LSU of his future. I wish the man good good fortune. All right. I don't want him to be at LSU. Don't get me twisted. Don't get me twisted. Let's do this. So, guys, the season's over, and it's time to recap the season. Aim four is not remotely close to expectations. What's interesting is that you would have had a really good argument outside of Alabama to be one of the nine or one of the 12 teams in with a nine and three record because you would have beaten South Carolina and all the South Carolina hype. There would have been a debate. Well, sellers went out. Well, it doesn't matter. We played on the field and LSU technically won. And by the way, Ole Miss is trying to come up in here and say that they have some claim, but even Ole Miss, you'd be like, well, all these SEC teams that are trying to clamor here, we beat two out of the three. Now, I can't say anything about Bama, but everybody knows that there's going to be a three-loss SEC team that gets into the playoff here. It's going to happen. It's coming. Bama actually moved up in the odds to be a pretty starting to get solid favorite to make the playoff next weekend or this weekend. And because you didn't meet those expectations, let's talk about the reasons why. Guys, when I look at this team and I look at this season and I look at the regular season, because anything can happen in a bowl game, and I don't really care what happens there. I don't know who's going to play. I don't know who's going to opt out. I don't know who's coming back. I don't know who's going to the NFL. I don't. All of that stuff right now is going to play itself out. I'm going to tell you where things are leaning and where the staff and where probably even Brian Kelly feels like that guys are coming back just based off of things that's being told. But, man, I look at one side of the football, okay? And I I look at defense, and there were moments where it was really bad. The Texas Texas A&M situation, horrible. Horrible. The Alabama and Milrow thing and you not being able to stop him, horrible. Horrible. Can't happen. I look at the USC game where you made Miller Moss, who got benched and now in the portal. People in the beginning of the season were talking about him having Heisman hype. (laughs) And it makes me mad. Makes me sad. And if I want to sound like Dr. Seuss, it does not make me glad. This LSU defense was 108th in the country last year in total defense. Because they're 52nd this year. And I don't think that you're going to have some of the guy, clearly, you're not going to have the same safeties that you had this year. I don't think that you have the same corners. I don't think that you have, I do think that you're going to look for a linebacker or progress from within. Because you, you jumped up from the hundreds to the fifties. And I asked all of you in the beginning of the season, what, um, what would you allow now, my take in the beginning of the season was that LSU would 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 finish in the mid fifties in total defense in the regular season. Me and Carter had a long segment about it. You can go on a YouTube channel and check it out. It's in the beginning of the season, 
We talked about this a lot. Guys, mid-50s is where they're at. So where I thought that they were um, is pretty much where they finished. Now, I didn't expect for there to be situations where you're still allowing teams to run the ball on you the way that they did. Maybe I should have because we talked about this defensive line all offseason. And when the depth started waning and you had guys banged up, well, that's where the D-line and linebackers, it, it started to become a problem. Guys, they finished about where I was at, fifty or what I thought that they would be. 52nd in total defense, 46 in passing yards allowed. Now, that number is really skewed because there were games like South Carolina, there were games like um, Alabama and Texas A&M where teams just didn't throw the ball on you for an entire half. I, I mean, like, Bama did not really throw the ball on you. They You gave up 313 rushing yards, so it's a little bit skewed. But you know what? Even if they finish in the mid fifties, and one of the, and two, both of those teams get 150 yards more apiece, and even a couple of more touchdowns, it's still better than where you were a year ago. You were 111th in the country in passing yards allowed last year. This year, you're 46th. There is a lot of context that goes into that. In that context. You got better based off of Blake Baker and what he's done. Interesting. Guys, you were 24th in the country in sacks. And there's not a bigger area that LSU progressed in total number than havoc rate and getting to the quarterback. Now, last year, ironically, you were in the 40s. But if you remember, LSU had a big bowl game and got sacks against Wisconsin. So they jumped up like 30 spots because they had like five sacks or whatever it was. And you look at LSU now, guys, they have not been this productive getting after a quarterback in, in a while. They just haven't been. And Blake wants to send heat. He wants to play man coverage. Good on him. Glad that he does. Don't be passive. Never be passive. But it's the biggest area that they that they grew. But one thing did remain the same. And one thing didn't change. And that is on third down. You could not get off the football field. You couldn't. You were in the hundreds last year on third down defense. You're 87th in the country this year. 87th. You're not going to win football games if you can't get off the field. And this has been a problem for Brian Kelly every single year at LSU. Your defense does not have the ability when they need to get stops. When they have to have stops, they cannot do it. What do we attribute that to? I'm play calling? We attribute that to guys not being smart and having situational awareness. Gotta be. We chalk it up to that you're just getting flat out out coached. That's all that what happens on third down. Because, guys, the, the truth is, and we're going to talk about this with Joe Sloan, so remember this point in just a moment. But the reason that you spend big money on coordinators is because majority of those guys are smarter on what they need to do on getting off or staying on the field on third down and the things and the plays that they call in the red zone. 
Now, I know that I had that with Blake Baker. Guys, you were 37th defensively in the red zone. You. You. The 37th best team in the country, which isn't great. It's not fantastic. Better than what you were last year when you were in the hundreds. You gave up a lot of yards, but man, there were a lot of times you held teams to field goals inside the red zone. I think about Bama, I think about AM. And then there were times where you got in the red zone, you just got your ass whooped. But more times than not, you were going to make a really good stand in the red zone. I know that I have a, a good play caller in Blake Baker. Guys, I think you need talent. And it's kind of wild to think, in a way, that I don't think that you had good safety play. I don't really think that you had great interior defensive line play. And I don't, I think you had average D line play this year. I don't even think you got good D line play this year. Now, the edge was a completely different situation. You got really good production from that. Braden Swenson, great. Savion Jones gave you a lot of effort. Fantastic. Man, you're the 52nd ranked defense in the country. And I, I I really don't know what else you can ask from Blake. Like, I, I really, really don't. The issue that I have with them defensively right now is that you got to replace eight seniors. And guys, you got to go get dudes. So the defense was bad. I'm with you. They were bad. Eight of them are leaving. You were 52nd in the country. And you don't really completely know where you're going to get all your guys coming back from. Is Devon Keys ready to be a full-time starter? Is he ready for that? Are you sure about that? What do you do with safety? Because I'm here to tell you, your room is not ready. That room is not ready. They got to go get safeties. And they got to go get them now. Got to get him now. Your safeties are supposed to be there that when everything else breaks down, that they make a tackle and these long, massive runs don't keep happening. Jay Ward is who you need. You need Jay Ward. You need a Greg Brooks. I don't I, I don't need elite. I, I need somebody who can just make me some plays. You're not getting that. So there's no bigger area of concern for me than this defense, ironically. Ironically, it, 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 it's just not. But, man, you got to get off the field on third down. I, it's, one, it's one trend you got to break. If you want to be a top 25 defense, guys, here, here's something that's simple. When teams are lining up for you on third down, you got to stop them. Bama went, uh, hold on. This is bad podcasting, but we got to do this. I'm really interested to see. Because I have a thought. Oh, shit. Shoot. Hold on. This is bad podcasting, but you're going to deal with me. Hold on. So LSU was on third down defensively against Bama. They were 10 of 13 was Bama against you. So Alabama converted 10 times out of 13 times on third down. That's why they beat you 42 to 13. Because if that gets cut in half, guys, they're not scoring 42 points. They're probably around 28 to 21 or 28 to 31. You're not stopping teams on third down. That has been a Brian, the, the, the number one thing that Brian Kelly has had the massive issue with in his tenure. You can't get off the field on third down defensively. All right. Offensively. Guys, here's just the God's honest truth. You can't keep having turnovers. Now, Nuss has been a lot better the last two weeks. 
against Vandy, against um, Oklahoma, even though he had the critical fumble. Um, he's been better in the turnover department. The interesting part about this offense, you're 31st in the country in total offense. You were eighth in passing. Well, you better be eighth in passing. You're at 315 yards a game. Guys, we threw the ball 500 times in the regular season. 500. There's actually 499 to be technical, but 500 times you threw the football. That's too much. It's too much. Scoring offense, you were 56. Turnovers, you were tied for 43rd. Um, Red zone, you were 99th. Third down offense, you were 10th. Sounds like a young offense. Sporadic and really good in one area, really shitty in others. The teams that, the things that, that, um, the things that you struggle with are what win teams national championships, right? So the, the things that LSU offensively cannot win in third down consistently in the running game, uh, they couldn't convert in the red zone. They're tied for 99th running the football. They're 108. So the things that LSU missed offensively all year are why the teams that are in the playoff are in the playoff. All of those teams can convert in the red zone. They got a really good scoring offense because they are converting in the red zone. They're able to extend drives when they're not just in the 20s. They're able to on third down and they need three yards to line up and run the ball. As Texas, Alabama, South Carolina, how they've gotten to nine wins. And there's going to be parts of the season where we'll be like, yeah, man, I mean, shit, I mean, some of it against y'all, we lined up and ran the football. So good in so many areas. So bad in so many others. No teams in the SEC scored more points off of your turnovers. Like, you're, you're, you're number one. Points scored off of turnovers. LSU is the best team to do that against. They were 16th in the SEC. They're 130th in the nation. That when you had a turnover, team scored on you. Mainly because a lot of them were very critical and in the red zone. Or in for the other team's red zone. So, look, man. Um, offensively, I do think you got talent. I do. I don't know if you have premier talent. I don't know if you have an alpha dog. Um... But one thing is for certain, I see talent all around it. I think that you do need to get some guys at guard. I think that they're going to take care of that. Um, you need to get a tackle, maybe. Guy that can play. And then maybe you get some guys to return. But until then, I, 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 I see some good things. The turnovers have got to stop. And to be real with you, here's the real part. I gave Nuss a lot of praise earlier in the show. If you're just joining us, please go back and listen to the beginning part of the show. Tons of praise. Garrett Nussmeyer has got to get to work, man. He's got to be on that Jane Daniels plan of 2023 because the turnovers, the inconsistencies, those things have got to be better. The turnovers have got to be better. Love the half that Nuss had against Oklahoma. Absolutely love it. It's the best half that I think that he's had in an LSU uniform. The adversity that he overcame, the, the just the overall sheer will that he showed when he came back, flawless. When people talk about grit, when people talk about determination, Garrett showed that on Saturday. Even, not even in the long throws to Chris Hilton, even when it's third and seven and you got to run the football to pick up the first down and dude's laying it all out on the line for a, a game that you got to go eight and four in. Okay. That's grit and determination. Thank you for showing everybody in the world that you got that. Because he had four fumbles this year that got recovered by the other team. He threw, he threw 11 interceptions. That's not winning football. You will not win football games. 
if you're turning the ball over that much. You just won't. And it's not it's not so much the turnovers as it is when, where, and how you're turning the ball over. When you're making careless mistakes against Ole Miss with a fumble, you're making a careless mistake against Ole Miss and throwing the ball up to a 5'8 receiver. It, it, the AM situations where you're throwing it right to a guy on a check down because you just don't take the half a second it takes to look and throw at your target. It's got to change, and he's got to get to work with it. He needs to be on the whiteboard. He needs to be on the on the uh, the, the 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 VR thing, whatever it was. He's got to put in the work. He's too talented. He's too gifted to leave his talents not excel in his talents. He's too good at it. He's too good at being a quarterback. But he's got to get to work. His footwork, guys, in my humble opinion, of just overall throwing is not good. He, he He's off platform when he's making throws that are critical. Now, what's, uh, what's interesting about that, when he either got a shot or something happened in the locker room, mechanically, he was flawless. He, 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 flawless. There were parts of his game on Saturday where he would hit the fifth drop. Boom, 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 boom. And he would take the Joe Burrow hitch. And then he'd toss his hip, throw the post to Chris Hilton. Guys, that is beautiful quarterbacking. What I'm used to seeing from Nuss is he opens up broadside, and when he wants to throw the fade or he wants to throw the post, he he's it's too lazy with his footwork, and he's not turning to make the throw. He's like, yeah, fade route. He's got to get his feet set. Saturday, he did it flawlessly. That's what I see. Turnover's got to stop. You're going to be in a situation again if you're not careful and you keep turning the ball over. I don't care what you say about me. You can think that I hate the kid. I don't. Because it's basic football logic. Basic. And if you if you are so dumb to think that you can't have critical turnovers like that and things drastically change, you're wrong. You're wrong. I promise you. I would love for you to come on the show and explain to me why you think that we're eight and four. Please. I take a lot of criticism. Go inside the chat and tell me. Everybody right now, tell me in the chat. Why do you think we're eight and four? You watch the games? You don't think it didn't have a massive part of it? Are you ludicrous? Are you ludicrous? And I'm not talking about the rapper. By the way, did y'all see Boosie rapping? <clears throat> did y'all see Boosie rapping? At the Bayou Classic? B-O-O! I know all of you in your head just now said, S-I-E. Inconsistency. So back to the main point here. Um, you're horrible at the things that win you championships. You were horrible. And if you're not careful... You'll be back in the same spot. All right. Let me do this. So, I um, know that you probably have some questions. This is what I'm going to do. Um, I assume that a lot of you have questions about the portal, about players. This is what I'm going to do. I am going to let you ask me the question. So, ask Blake on Tuesday. It's not going to be this week. It's going to be today. I'm going to talk about the portal. If you have questions, I'm going to answer them. 
Put them inside the chat right now. Let me get to a quick break. When we come back, we'll answer those questions. We'll talk about the portal next. Stay with us. Guys, I want to talk to you about our good friends over the Drake Williams Law Firm and Drake Title Company. Are you facing tough times due to an injury from a car accident, navigating the complexities of divorce, or purchasing a new home? At the Drake Williams Law Firm and Drake Title Company, they understand the challenges you're going through, and they are here to help. The lawyer team of Ernie Drake III, Ryan J. Williams, and Summer Vignair, along with Morgan Daniels, have the experience and proven track record to give you that peace of mind. Give them a call today at 985-386-7600. That's 985-386-7600 to schedule a free consultation at their brand new office located in historic downtown Ponchatoula. They're also doing a special, the AYS special. If you're refinancing or closing on a home in Southeast Louisiana, request the Drake Title Company to handle your closing. If you mention Blake Rafino and AYS, you're going to receive a $400 discount on title fees. Again, give them a call at 985-386-7600. Let them know that Blake Rafino. Guys, you might know my good friend Carol Falls and all the great service that he provides over at State Farm. He is your good neighbor after all. But did you know State Farm has surprisingly great rates as well? Along with the great neighbor service, State Farm agent Carol Falls has surprisingly great rates for everyone inside the state of Louisiana. So call him today at 985-395-4300, 985-395-4300 for all of those surprisingly great rates on auto, home, and life insurance needs. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there and individual premiums will vary by customer. All applicants subject to the State Farm underwriting requirements. Guys, let me tell you about our good friends over at Easy Free Bell Bonds, LLC, where they get your feet back on the street. There may come a time where a loved one or yourself is arrested and you don't have enough money to get bail from jail. Easy Free Bail Bonds will assist you in the process of getting bail bonds for your family. These bonds are a way to ensure that you're financially covered when a predicament like an arrest occurs. Easy Free Bail Bonds is located inside the state of Louisiana with an expert team of bondsmen that are available to assist you or your family 24-7. The team is professional and has a high-quality work ethic that will give you nothing but satisfaction. The company takes feedback from past customers in order to better their services and are always looking to accommodate and mold their services that best fit your needs. Remember this number, 985-517-3631. That's 985-517-3631. Because when you need to get back on your feet and back on the street, you know who to call. We're back. All right. We got some super chats off in here. Richie Roche from Roche's Lawn and Landscaping with a $50 super chat says, what's up, Blake? What's going on, bud? Um, man, I have been on the fence about BK. Listen to his post game in its entirety. BK made some good points about youth and having built the roster up with freshmen, returning some key players, maybe playoff next year, question mark. Um, here's what I'd say, Richie, I, I'm not, it's way too early for me to, um, even think about the playoffs. Um, he's got to do something in the portal that that's the bottom line. So you got to get, I mean, you're eight and four. There's a lot of question marks that you got to answer. So no, I'm not going to say playoffs. Um, a lot of things have got to go into it. A lot. A lot has got to go into it. So we'll see. Thank you so much for the $50 Super Chat. Always appreciative of you, good sir. Uh, $5 Super Chat from I am the Alex 129 on YouTube. It says, talk about DJ Chester. He's got to be the worst center in LSU history. I don't think he's the worst center in LSU history. Would love to talk on the phone. Would love to talk on the phone about LSU football. Uh, well, then call in the postgame shows. Call in the postgame shows. That's the easiest way to talk to me. I'm not going to pick up the phone and call you. But I appreciate you for the Super Chat. I'm not going to pick up the phone and call you. Call into the postgame shows. Uh, in reference to your point, I don't think he's the worst center in LSU history. Liam Shanahan still exists. 
Um, Daniel Edwards with a $5 super chat. Thank you. Says Blake, when revenue sharing takes effect, do I still need to give money to the collective? I give to the collective every month. Thank you. Um, I don't know. Probably. Probably. Because they're still going to need money to go get players. It Guys, it is wild. It is wild that they have to ask you for money to go get dudes. It's, it's insane. It's purely insane. You know it is. I know it is. Everybody knows it is. But normally in the NFL, when billionaires have a team, they got money to go get dudes. So they have money people. And the people that don't get dudes are the cheap ones. Model sounds familiar, doesn't it? Cleveland Browns, Cincinnati Bengals don't spend the money. Jacksonville Jaguars, I mean, they spend some money, but not really, not like that. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, come on, man. Come on. I, I mean, until they change something, I mean, they can't outlaw NIL. They can't. Until there's a until there's a full collective bargaining agreement and there are actual rules that everybody agrees to, you're not you're not gonna get past it, man. It's the only way to do it. And not why would people all agree? And let me let me just throw this out there. In women's basketball, men's basketball at the current moment, and LSU baseball, why would you agree? You would be agreeing for LSU football. And some of you are like, well, Blake, I love LSU football more than all. And I'd be like, okay, well, I, I'm with you there. But, guys, you're spending more money in the portal in, in college baseball than anybody. <laughs> guys, you're spending serious money, serious money for dudes in college baseball. You think the number – like. Guys, there were what of the of the ten top players in the portal, you got seven of them. <laughs> Y'all really think that Jay ain't sl slinging out that cash? Y'all are outside y'all's box. If you believe that, you're outside your box. Doctor John Sibley Butler sends twenty dollars. Says thanks for a great season. Thank you, Doc. I appreciate that. Can we pre predict next year without knowing portal? I doc, I can't. I cannot. Um, because there's so many needs. That, I mean, you have eight new defensive starters. I've never seen the guys below them be consistently the number one guy. Um, I guys, I'll tell you this: I do think you're going after experienced DB. You you can't roll out there with two true freshmen. You can't. I mean, let's just be real. You can. So you need an experienced DB, a guy that can play. You probably need a nickel. You need safeties. You need safeties in the worst way. You need a true middle linebacker. Guys, when's the last time that we just – Damon Clark, that's who it was. Were you Guys, you need a dude. I'm not asking for a first-round pick here. I'm asking for a mid-level – I'm asking for Kevin Minner. You get what I mean? Do you, you get what I'm trying to say? I'm not asking for anything massive here. Now, I'd love, I would love a Damon Clark senior year. I would love that. If you could provide that, I would love it. Whit Weeks is not that anchor in the middle. He's not. He's a weak side linebacker that flows sideline to sideline. So, um, Doc, no, not for me. Maybe somebody else will do it, but I, I, I can't. I can't do it not knowing without the portal. And here's another thing. Like, God forbid, Garrett Nussmeyer leaves or returns. Okay? Um, then what do you do? Like, if he leaves, what do you do? Now, I'm not – I'm in the camp that I think he comes back. But – I don't know, man. I, I mean, how does Colin Hurley look? We're gonna find out quick. Caden Salter might be getting paid, paid. 
I don't know. But the tough conversation that you got to have with Caden Salter is he a better quarterback than Garrett? Some will say yes, some will say no. You go make the decision. Uh, Dane Bergeron says BK is catching flack from certain media members. Of course he is. Um, I wish he had shown that passion all year. That was the BK I thought LSU was getting when he got the job. Do you think BK will get a QB in the portal? Yes, I do. Yes, I agree. I, I mean, he did have some fire in the post game, but he's not happy that he went eight and four. I mean, guys, people don't have to go out there hooping and hollering to make you sh to show that they have passion. They don't. They don't. They got to have a massive offseason. They do. They really, really, really do. Guys, this is it for him. This is it. So, where his legacy goes, that's up to him. That's up, guys, that's up to BK. Where does his legacy go from here? Does he care about it? Does he not? I mean, we're going to find it out. I tend to think that he does care about it, though. I, I really do tend to think that he does. All right. Um, Pegasus says, Blake, how much does Nuss' decision uh, affect draft decisions, and what kind of QB do you go after in the portal? Look, do you move on from Joe Sloan? I mean, like, do you demote him to just being a quarterback's coach? I don't know. I, I don't know those answers. Those are questions that I have. Um, so to know what kind of quarterback that BK would go after, guys, I, I am a I am a I don't need a, a true dual threat per se. But I need a guy that will run. I don't need him to do it every time. I need a guy that can move. Because in today's game, if you don't move, you're in trouble. Bottom line. Let's look at some of the top quarterbacks. And let's look at some of the top quarterbacks that have come out in the draft. What do all of them have in common? Drake May can run. Jaden can run. Caleb can run. Arch can run. When And Arch is going to be a guy like that. Um... We literally saw Carson Beck put a put the game on the line by him running the football. Literally. Shador Sanders will move um, and can move. Cam Ward can move. I mean, like, guys, all.